the White House said he's not representing the American government. Kissinger is a real politic practitioner. He has nothing to do with those Straussian neocon cycles controlling US foreign policy at the moment. The Chinese, obviously, they are sophisticated enough not to be fooled by the fact that an old friend of China was visiting the president of China nowadays. But before I leave, I'd like to answer another question from the Chinese audience, which was uh, Kissinger's uh, visit to China. This is a very important question. Uh, and it dovetails to the, the previous question as well, which is the hegemon walking away from the mess in Ukraine. I think it's all interlinked. Well, Kissinger is a real politic practitioner. He has nothing to do with those Straussian neocon cycles controlling US foreign policy at the moment, as Michael knows better than anyone. I'm talking about uh, in the background people like Robert Kagan and on the foreground that toxic trio of Sullivan, Blinken, and Newland. So these people are extremely dangerous. They are real poison. And the problem is they control US foreign policy. Uh, I, I, I've been trying to say that uh, in all my columns for the past, uh, what, two years or so, that, that there is no Biden. Biden doesn't exist. Biden cannot find his way to the nearest toilet, period. And there are zillions of footage everywhere proving it. What exists is the Biden combo. And this combo is very, very dangerous. It includes, of course, uh, Sullivan, Nuland, and Blinken, includes the neocons in the background, includes people from the, the Clinton uh, machine, include people, includes people linked to Obama, et cetera. Uh, the problem is they organized and they invested in the war in Ukraine since 2014, and even before, as Nuland himself acknowledged on the record. We invested over $5 billion in the whole process. So 2014 was something that started way before. And we can we, we have many excellent analysis by Russian, uh, Russian academics, especially saying that this war actually started 30 years ago. We, we should have a podcast only to, to try to explain why it started 30 years ago. Anyway, Assuming 2014, neocons and the people from the Obama administration, by the way, the same people who organized the debacle in Brazil, which led to the impeachment of President Dilma and to put uh, President Lula in jail. This was all started by Obama's people or authorized by Obama's people, including Biden. And now that we know, thanks to Seymour Hersh, number one investigative reporter in the past 50 years in the United States, proving by his own deep state sources. This is not a conspiracy theory that the bombing of the Nord Stream 1 and 2 gas pipelines was organized by these toxic people, the Biden combo, right? So now that they see that the whole operation, including the devastating hybrid war, basically financial war against Russia didn't work, they need a way out. As Michael just said, they need to walk out. How they're going to walk out? They are moving the goalposts. They are actually now announcing that the real war is against China, which is completely crazy. And I think we had, the, if you go to YouTube and you see an interview by Edward Lutvak a few days ago, I used it uh, in the column that I wrote this morning before I joined you guys. I was, I was writing a column linking Kissinger, Edward Lutvak, Brzezinski, uh, be, be, basically are the same actors, right? And that started with Kissinger in Beijing. So a real politic practitioner goes back to meet the new leader of China. Uh, 53 years after that famous 1971 visit by Kissinger when he met with Zhu Enlai, preparing 
Nixon's 1972 trip to Beijing. And obviously Xi Jinping was a, an active reader of modern history. He quoted that, of course, he, he said that explicitly because he knew he would be quoted by everybody in Chinese media, uh, that Kissinger is an old friend of China, that he, he came to visit uh, over 50 years ago. Da, da, da. When the Chinese tell you in front of you that you are an old friend of China, this is as serious as it gets. So the Chinese would never expect uh, Kissinger to backstab them. And Kissinger would never do that because Kissinger owns a lot of his prestige, deserved or not, that's another question. The fact is his prestige vis-a-vis -vis -vis the Politburo and the different uh, Chinese administrations is basically because of what he did 50 years ago when he met Mao in person. But this has nothing to do with what's really happening behind closed doors in Washington. And that was spelled out. The guy gave away the game by this interview by Edward Lutwak two or three days ago, when he said explicitly, the new script is a war against China, and obviously China is going to lose this war. He says that explicitly in the interview. It's something absolutely mind-boggling. So when you have a guy who has been advised... He's a, a very dangerous strategist. This guy has been advising the Pentagon for five decades. So the guys in the Pentagon and the guys in the National Security Council, CIA types all over, they pay attention to Lutwak. And what Lutwak is saying in this interview is basically what's being discussed in the back rooms in the, across the Beltway. Let's prepare for the war on China. And meanwhile, we find... Uh, Michael would say some sort of moral victory no? in Ukraine. Let's walk away and then we, we proclaim a moral victory. After all, we are the hegemon. We get away with it and then we concentrate everything on China. And an excellent example of all this maneuvering is that William Burns, head of the CIA, he called Sergei Narishkin, the head of the SVR, Russian Foreign Intelligence. And basically, Burns proposed to Narishkin. Let's try to find a deal to get out of this thing. It's fascinating. This is something that next month, I, I'll be back to Moscow late next month. I'm going to try to confirm in Moscow something about the real dialogue between Burns and Arishkin. So when we have the, the full a picture of why Burns called Narishkin and what Narishkin told Burns, we're going to have more or less the full picture of how the Americans plan to extract themselves from this war to concentrate on the war on China, as admitted, you know, <laughs> in your face by Lutwak in this interview. Uh, so this was much more important than Kissinger's visit, because Kissinger's visit was, as the American government said explicitly, it's unofficial and does not represent the views of the current American administration. This is what... Uh, uh, rational old school practitioners in, in the US would think in terms of uh, this war was unnecessary from the beginning and let's try to end it and let's try not to antagonize China at the same time. But we're talking about rational people. This Strauss and Neocomp cycles, they are not rational. They are extremely dangerous. And this, these people must be fought by rational Americans. The problem is rational Americans don't have enough power to go against these people. So, so, so this is the, I would say, this is the basic framework of the Kissinger visit to China. So the Chinese, obviously they are sophisticated enough not to be fooled by the fact that an old friend of China was visiting the president of China nowadays. They have to be focused on what the, the people in the background in Washington are plotting against China and they know it. So, you know, no secrets. <laughs>